So I, there's a few things that popped up and these are things that we talked about, but, um, and some not, but I think the biggest thing that I um, recognize, of course, is the stigma behind that word, yeah. hoarding, you know, and so we try to be a little more sensitive and say, well, go cluttering type behavior, right? But, um, and just how isolated people are with um, those tendencies and, you know, and, and looking at, you know, where could it be rooted in or rooted from? And mm. sometimes it's relevant and sometimes it's not. And, um, but the isolation, I think, is the biggest thing because these are people who, who generally tend to isolate or have been isolated by family or, you know, and really, um, they just want connection, you know? And there was one um, lady who I would call every week and I would check in with her. She's like, it's so good to hear from you. I haven't talked to anybody all week. Mm. And I'm like, how could you not, yeah. you know? Um, and then when it came down to her things and organizing, cause she really, really wanted um, to have space in her home to be able to do the things she loves. And um, she, as soon as we talked about, well, you know, those five blenders that you have, I mean, maybe you could only, you just, just one she would get a little protective well I don't you know and, uh, and so I um, would just kind of leave the conversation but you know even though there's a willingness to to live or be in a different way there was still some um let's use the word attachment yeah to the things yes and um and just the isolation I think like yes. that was the biggest thing and and how and the shame yeah so much shame um and just how paralyzing that is for people yes. and I think that that is pretty much like across the board with whatever people are struggling with with mental health and substance yes. use there's so much shame that it's their fault you know in a way that they yeah. you know and and maybe some of it is but I mean also too that regardless of that they're here now and they're wanting help mm -hmm. Let, let's see what what yes. that looks like so um, I'm curious I mean maybe with this individual or someone else did they talk about previous efforts to get help or did they talk about um absolutely and they did receive help and um that was actually quite traumatizing for them because she had items that were stolen from her she um so she was quite hesitant to have new people come in and yeah. the same thing happened to her um again and so i you know we just took it one bite one step at a time and actually we never actually removed anything she never actually you know and, and we talked about maybe getting her into a supportive housing because right. her health was starting to deteriorate because yeah. but she was hesitant for that too you know to have to move and change her lifestyle um, right. in some ways so I mean you can only help people where they're at in that moment that is yes. their microcosm what I think and feel and what I am capable of doing has no business <laughs> right. Absolutely. within that conversation. So. Would it be fair to say that uh, you felt that the relationship that you built with her was helpful for her on some level? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. You could just hear it in her voice, how excited she was. And yeah. Just, why don't you stop by? And I'm like, oh, COVID, <laughs> you know, just trying to keep boundaries. But right. I knew that, you know, she was really just seeking connection and, um, and just trying to make her world a little bit bigger with that, you know, the smallness of it all. And, Absolutely. Yeah.